two. I love the gym. It's good to be back in Los Angeles, Dublin. Yep, well, glad to be here. Yeah. <laughs> it's really come together, right? Yeah. But, you know, so we've been doing this show for a little while now, if you don't know, it's called I'd Lather Be Shaving. Uh, you can check that out at idlatherbeshaving.com. Please subscribe and like, and we're building that channel from the ground up. It's rather an organic building process. Definitely. And we'd love you to be a subscriber. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd just feel inadequate. <laughs> well, that's, that's I think annoying. we should just beg. <laughs> please, please, everyone, please. Okay, okay. so good? let's okay. begin. Well, in the beginning, well, so one of the um, kind of the, the coolest sets that we have, and we've, you know, people always ask us a lot about, would be something like this. This is a 1909 Gillette Deluxe set. And so if you see like old advertisements and they say, you know, Gillette razors were sold for $5 up to $75, and this is in 1909, which would be like $1,400 today. This was the $75 model. And so basically somebody would have to write into Gillette and actually get them to like hand engrave each piece. Now Gillette only had like four master engravers. So every one of these pieces was all done by hand and that's what makes something like this really, really rare, really, really collectible. This is beautiful too. I, yeah, thank you. I feel like if I rub it, a genie's gonna come out of it. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe in your, in your dreams. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> But something like that, you know, something that makes it more rare is, is the engraving on this set, and just the fact that the price point of what it used to be sold for. Um, sometimes, not even the razor itself is what makes something rare, it's actually the themes that came with the razor set. So here's another really, really cool piece. Now this is a Gillette uh, uh, pocket edition set, and again, it's dated November 5th, 1909, and we actually know that because the Packers ticket and the inspector's ticket are still in the set. So these are things that most people would just take and throw away like that. <laughs> but that is so cool to me that, you know, well, gosh, that's value 108 well. years later, whatever it is, it's still here, the paper. And that, that'll add value to the, the kit. Oh yeah, tons of value. Look at that. And I actually picked this locally in Phoenix, Arizona. So other people always ask, like, where'd you get your razors? A lot of it was picked about 10 years ago before razor collecting got really big. Right. What do you got? <laughs> oh, Bring it, Doug. Doug. Bring okay, it. Okay, I have some. You know, where Matt is like the Gillette guy, Yes. his collection pretty much consists of. First of all, let's talk about the whole concept of collecting versus yeah, what is collecting? buying random stuff. Accumulating. Uh, collecting, you got to set the goal first of what yes. you're going to be collecting for. And that's what we're going to be looking for. So where he does Gillette's, that's his you know, yep. focus. American Gillette's. I'm more about everything else that was happening around the same time as Gillette across the pond. <laughs> all, just all over the world. You know, Gillette is very interesting, but there were so many other interesting razors happening at the time, so many other innovative razors right. that were happening at the time. Gillette kind of just found something and ran with it when mm -hmm. it comes to innovations. Not to take anything away from Gillette, because they pretty much started it all, but there were other companies too that people often forget or don't know about. And uh, so I brought a, cool, you know, a couple cool different razors here that I know a little bit about. In fact, if any of you guys know a little bit more about them, you can share them with me after the show or in the comments when the show goes live on That's YouTube. Right. But as, uh, well, last week we covered uh, Wade and Butcher's straight razors yep. in our Sheffield episode. So I thought I would bring a rare Wade and Butcher safety razor. Now when you very think Wade cool. and Butcher, you don't often think no. about them doing safety razors. This did. This was a very unique safety razor because it took a proprietary blade, their own blade. In fact, you have to, if you want to use it today, you have to modify the blade. Uh, I'll be doing a tutorial on that. Are those design. square holes? Those are square holes. And typically, you know, uh, Gillette's one on, they, they did use the square holes as well, but they were tilted, they were more diagonal okay. uh, here and there in certain razors. So they made it really difficult to use Gillette blades. You had to buy their blades. Right. If you were going that to was use, the game. That was the game. Uh, so you could use a hole puncher to modify a blade today to fit this, and I recommend you do if you ever pick one of these up. They are rare, but if you do find one, this is great for a collection of oddities. And um, again, if you'll notice the handle. Is it a box? I just redid this handle on my Alpha Ecliptic. It's one of my favorites. However, it was inadvertent that I did that. I, I didn't even know that they were doing this at the time. I bought this after the fact. But look at that handle. So it's a beautiful handle. It's very cool. So this is what one of the actual blades looked like. So instead of the cutouts you see today, it's just these big square holes. Exactly. Very cool. And so in my, as a collector, I wanted the box also. I thought that was Marissa. Hello. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so the box is also very important when collecting. If you yes, can find it in paper, the box, paper, paper. That's what you really, because this, this stuff did not last, did not make its way through time. So if you have this as part of your collection with the razor, even better. As I, I always imagine like this scene where it's like the Great Depression and people are hard up for like, you know, paying their electric bill and they're like sitting there burning like, you know, rare Gillette boxes and stuff. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. 
That probably went, went down now. But anyways, <laughs> just like that. And so again, now we see this. This is the Durham. Now some of you know of the Durham razor, which is pretty much the size of a rug cutting blade. It, that's what I've heard. You can use at Home Depot. They sell rug cutting blades that you can put in it there. It will fit this. Have um, you ever done that? I have not because you know Durham. Actually, I'm pretty sure they're still in existence or something, some way, shape, or form, and are still selling the blades that are only available okay. in the UK. I could be making this up, however, and lying to all of you. Uh, but <laughs> but I'm almost certain that's true. Now, if you notice, check this out. It's a hell of a guard. That thing's just giant. Yeah, it really is. Look you can like do like three strokes in one with that. Look at the handle here. <laughs> Telltale, no? So if Evan oh, yeah. was a popular design back then, or at least that's what we think at first, turns out Durham and Wade and Butcher combined forces are merged at some point or another. So okay. there you go. That's where the handle goes on. Check that out. That is crazy. I mean, that's like a straight razor. Straight razors are usually three inches. That looks like it's maybe two and three quarter, or maybe even three. It's Huge. Well, Durham was known for their the double-edged straight razor, you know. Right. And so typically that would be in like a shavette shape of Durham, and it would be double-sided. Uh, let's see, so what else we got here? We got the Le Coq, which is French for the cock, <laughs> which meaning rooster. Uh, right, rooster. Got her mind. Uh, and this is what we have over here. So check out the guard on that bad boy. This probably couldn't be recreated today, and if it was, it'd be very expensive to do. This is also a very aggressive razor, but why, again... Why does it go down like that? This was their design. Okay. That's what it's all about. And this is what I'm saying. You see very unique stuff coming out of Europe. So, uh, obviously out of France. But boxes included. We got the blade bank still intact. Now, does this take just a standard double-edged blade? It does. Okay, have you actually used this? I have, but I've modified it. You uh, modified it? Do you, like, shim it or what? No, no, I don't modify the blade. I modify <laughs> the razor. I use a, a different handle on okay. it and a different top cap. And how does it, I mean, how does it shave? That's always the question very when aggressive. I was asked. How does it shave? <laughs> very, very, very aggressively. It looks like it. It does. And it's a very funky design. It's very unique, and it's, it's definitely going to stick out in your collection. Yes, it would. And then, <laughs> moving on. It would definitely stick out in my collection. <laughs> yeah, it definitely would. His Gillette collection. Now we have the Loresh. And this to me is like one of those holy grail pieces. Loresh is a very, very interesting and unique company that came out of France. In fact, some of you may be familiar with their other razor by Kirby Beard Co. Uh, Kirby Beard Co. had Loresh making their razors for them. In fact, my Prismatic is based on the Kirby Beard Co. razor. That for a while, it's sculpt top. We didn't know where it was coming from. We didn't know much of their history because the plant was bombed during the Second World War. So we don't really have much archival stuff when it comes to Kirby Beard Co. or especially Loresh. This looks just like a standard Gillette old type kind of guard. Is there anything fancy about it? Yeah, it's just uh, the tolerances I think are better than what Gillette was up It does feel pretty tight, yeah. The, I mean, these guys were artists over at Loresh. Uh, but the stuff they were doing was so innovative at the time, and it was really killing Gillette's uh, business to a certain extent over in, the, uh, in Europe. It's got a really good weight to it. And if, it, the, you know, if the bombs, if the Nazi bombs didn't take out the company, Gillette probably was going to go out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so those are some excellent pieces, and again, you want to look for the cases. You want to make sure that the original cases, which can often be difficult with more of these unique and strange razors, but there's not many photos online. Uh, you can use, I mean, there's certain guidebooks out there. Um, yeah, Mr. Razor is a great resource I look at all the time. Um, and some of these guidebooks you can get printed, or they're typically costly, and the photos are in black and white, and they're not always the best photos, and they're always from weird angles, too, so you really, it's tough to figure it out, so. Right. You know, checking out what Matt's Razor Archive or the Razor Emporium, you might be able to find some of these things, but it's really about dating. And that's part of the collection, too. That's like the Indiana Jones, like, yes. vibe I get. You know, you, you got to find out more about it. And so it belongs it, in a museum. It belongs in a museum. But it's typical. So it's up to you, really, to do the research and dig up what you can. And, uh, you know, if you can create your own videos or blog about it and whatnot, it's putting it out there for the rest of us that are looking for yeah. this stuff. Um, Where so, do you find them? We just said Mr. Razor, Razor Archive. Where do you find Oh, I thought you'd never ask. Well, so, um, who are you? The, the secret razor vault. I mean, <laughs> I have a key, don't you? I use, I often, I use the bay. I use eBay, but I use yeah. eBay UK. Yeah, eBay UK. Uh, I've often, and especially for my collecting, because again, a lot of these razors came out of Europe. So that's the best place to find some of these rarities. But there's also eBay Japan. There's eBay. All different eBay's and Google Translator. It's gonna sound funny to a lot of these people, but that's how you're gonna figure out yeah. what's going on. If you go to the bottom of eBay, you can actually go to the different international sites, and so you can check out these other places. Another tip that I learned long ago, and maybe it's not a secret: if you're looking for Gillette, maybe try putting in a misspelled version of the word Gillette. So, drop an L, drop a T, 
people you would think they would have it right in front of them, they can spell it, but they, they mess it up, you know, mix it up sometimes. So yeah, um, that's another kind of pro tip. Type out vintage, type out VTG. Uh, it's all about the different metadata. Or just razor lot. <laughs> yeah, razor, that's that's yeah. my favorite. Well, that's the thing. And that, when it comes to collecting, you can find some razor lots out there that could throw off your collection as well. You know, so I mean, you, you kind of want to keep it targeted when it comes to collecting certain pieces. Yeah. Keep you on point and it actually will speed up your collection. Craigslist ads. Craigslist ads, yeah. Be surprised. Uh, yeah, you know. How do you know when you see something in an antique store that it's worth picking up? Well, that's why you have I bring a Matt with me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you bring a smartphone and you very quickly Google it. That's exactly what you do. Yeah, that's about well, what you do. Well, I mean, if, if you're, again, I think Douglas said that when you're building a collection, you should have a goal. So if you're going out, you're looking for Gillette's, obviously you should be knowing what you're looking for. But generally, if something's at the right price, pick it up. You can always find out later. If you don't like it, sell it. And also use the forums as your lifeline. Yes, chat room. Let the guys know that you're going out picking today. And uh, you know, be available. Be yeah, available. Facebook like, is yeah, awesome. Like Snap things. a picture. And, and we're all waiting for these photos. We want to help you out. So that's one way to find out. You can also visit the eBay's. You might be able to see if the price is right. You know, if it compares, if it's comparable. I do this all the time. I probably shouldn't tell you guys this, but there's an antique store right up the street. Yes. But I've been here for a week, so it's not it's worth going. It's cleared out. Right but uh, yeah, definitely check it out. But the entire time I'm in there, I'm on eBay comparing prices. Can I get find somewhere else cheaper? Is this price right? The it's, other thing, the other thing I've done in the past. Make I mean the guys from Antique Archaeology, American Pickers. Do you guys watch American Pickers? Anyone? I'm waiting for them to do an episode with razors, and it's never going to happen. I don't think. Someone needs to do. Someone that. needs to do it. <laughs> hint, hint. Um, but make a little flyer, make little business cards. We had a, oh, yes, a collector yes. friend, Justin Sullins. Maybe you guys know him from some of the chat rooms. I, know I gave him that tip actually. Make I mean you could go to VistaPrint.com, make a little tiny business card that says "I buy razors." Leave it with the antique store because before things even go out for sale. They're going to call through different lists they have. Oh, this guy's into coins, this guy's into matchbox cars. They're going to call the razor guy and they're going to say, hey, we got some razors here because they know it's a guaranteed sale before they have to wait for it to sit in a display case for three months. Business cards is so key. Leave yeah. them with the collectors at the antique. Well, it's, you know, you get the antique malls as well, but yeah. always, and if you can, try to work directly through the seller at the antique malls rather than yep. the antique mall. Uh, but yeah, the dealers. Business, yeah, press the flesh with those guys and give them your card so they know they have an audience for this stuff. Exactly, and just and try not to be discriminated. To say I buy razors, and if you start being the guy that's just buying all the razors and not being picky, and maybe you have to sell them elsewhere, at least you get all the best that come through the kind of the, the, the thick Yeah, you'll get the call back first. Yep, it's all about the call back. So, some other really cool razors we get asked about all the time. I brought, so another one from Gillette, of course. I'm Mr. Gillette, apparently. Captain That's Dad. Doug. Yeah, this is a very cool razor called the Gillette Executive. This came out like in 1948, ran through 52. And it features this really, really cool barber pole handle. A lot of razor makers today have kind of mimicked that same spiral design. Double helix. Yeah, so cool. But what makes this piece really cool to me, again, back to the paper, uh, things like price tags, I, I've literally bought entire sets that I already had just to get the price tag, and then I, you know, resold it off. So price tags, things like, you know, uh, reserve supply of blades under mirror, and then under the mirror there is the reserve supply of blades, stuff like that. Um, things that are in original condition, of course, condition matters, and that's another big theme. You can have the most theoretically collectible razor set out there, but if it's really beat up. Yeah. Right. It's a filler in your collection. Yeah. I mean, many of you probably collected comics and coins and stamps. It's usually why we gravitate towards this as a hobby as well. Uh, and so you guys know about fillers in your collection. You might have yeah. a stamp. It's not all there, but it's filling up the spot until you find exactly. one better condition. It, it just, we, I used to call it like an ornament in my collection. Oh, it looks neat. Maybe you kind of keep it closed and tuck it off to the side. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, I totally get that. Yeah. You know, I might want to bring up this one too. I have talked about this. I'm a huge fan of Bakelite. Bakelite was pretty much the first plastic. And, it's um, like injection molded, right? Has a history of itself. It can, yeah. They also used them on lathes. Uh, used them on lathes as well. They created rods in uh, in molds, and they would spin those on lathes. Okay. And they other designs as well. But I mean, um, Bakelite is magical stuff, and I'll tell you why. See this? To this? To you? It, and to me, it looks butterscotch. It does. But that's yeah. not necessarily the original color. That's the patina that will form on Bakelite, probably six to a year, uh, six months to a year into it's its gorgeous. life. Yes. Now, what kind of razor is this? What's the brand? I don't know the brand on this one. In fact, again, to the audience, if you guys know anything about this razor, <laughs> survey says. Yeah. The unique thing about it is the top cap is metal. Right. Which yeah, gives I see a that. little bit of weight to the handle. It really it does the job that you would expect to do. So you get the light handle. You get this uh, fulcrum point now happening. 
quite naturally because of the metal. So it's exactly where you want it to be, and it's a hell of a shaver. I'm guessing it's probably from the late 1920s, but I could be wrong, but the handle is beautiful. It's well, an art deco on the top, too, with the engraving. Really, really beautiful piece. And I was going to say, that's probably kind of another thing with collecting, is things that were delicate and actually have held up is another thing. Like, if you see a really collectible straight razor and the handles are broken because they're ivory, it's like, well, now it's not really worth anything, but Bakelite is pretty fragile as well. Well, that can be a misconception to a certain extent. <laughs> Bakelite was used in so much stuff. It's still used in the automotive industry today. In fact, the automotive industry wouldn't be where it is if it wasn't for the invention of Bakelite at the time that it came out. Really? What yeah. is cars and Bakelite? How does that... The casings inside the engine case and stuff, because it's, it's non-conductive. Oh, so, yeah, okay. even light bulb cases, okay. too, uh, back in the day, that's what it was Bakelite. Yeah. Bake, so it's still, it's still used in the industry. There's not as many fun colors like there used to be because it's used more for industrial purposes. But magical, magical stuff. And again, if you're out in the wild hunting for stuff and you want to know if it's Bakelite or not, be it a razor handle, be it a razor, be it a phone, uh, what you do is a quick friction test on it. Just create a little bit of friction, then smell your hands. What's it supposed to smell like? Formaldehyde. It has a How do you know what formaldehyde smells like? It's great science class. Come on, the pig? The pig? Anyways, I don't uh, remember that at all. But it will have a chemical smell is what I'm getting at here. You could also, if it's yours or if no one's looking, you could take a little pin and poke it through there, and the top, the top layer and the in, inner layer will be different colors. Okay. And that's due to the patina. Now, I just released a bagel light razor not too long ago, and people were doing these tests on it. And it's like, guys, you're not, well, the formaldehyde test will work. But when it comes to like testing the layers, people are like, oh, it's not it's patina not yet. It's not patina yet. Yeah. It takes about six months to a year again. Right. So um, that's that on the Bakelite Razor. Again, if any of you know anything about this one, let me know. Because I absolutely love this razor. I used it this morning and I use it all week. So one other really cool thing that makes something collectible is if it was a limited release or some kind of early edition of something. So a lot of people are familiar with the Gillette Fat Boy. How, how many people out there have used a Gillette Fat Boy razor? A lot. Or thought they did. It was a slim adjustable. <laughs> right. So before there was a fat boy you see, there was the toggle, of course. Uh, like this guy here. This is a kind of a pretty cool nickel toggle that was only made for a couple years. But the regular fat boy actually started its life off with the dial down at the other end of the handle. This is what we call a bottom dial fat boy. Now there's not just one. They actually had six different variations of the bottom dial. I learned this. I did some uh, work out at Procter & Gamble to help them kind of go through their stuff. And we found out, yeah, I know, <laughs> let me just name drop here. But um, bottom line is they had different handles. This is actually an aluminum handle and it has a black dial that's also, I think it's aluminum or maybe even plastic. So this is a variation of a variation. Um, so again, that makes this razor collectible is that it was only out and they actually used it as like a test market. So they actually delivered these to people by mail and they said, try it out. And the reason Gillette did not go with this design, we all think of it today as collectible because it is, it's rare. Scarcity de defines value and defines if something's, you know, um, it's been collectible. But people actually had a hard time using the butterfly action and having the little adjustment down here at the same time. And so that's why Gillette moved it up to the top and it ended up being what we now know as the toggle. And then that then it became the regular fat boy. The, you know, the toggle was selling for like ten dollars or this one was seven fifty. Then they tried making it a lot cheaper. Why did they call it the dollar ninety five adjustable? They wanted to hit the lower market too, and that's how you got this guy. That's oh, beautiful, nice Yeah. And those are pretty hard to find. Even the case is not your standard case, it's a lot more bubbled, a lot bigger, plus obviously the magnifiers down here at the other end. Now, yeah, it's like a bug box. Now what year is this from now? That is from 1956 through 1960. And is this all metal or is this Bakelite I'm looking so at? So brass on top, plated nickel, aluminum, aluminum. handle. Okay, yeah. so the black is painted, it's uh, anodized? Yeah, oh, exactly. Crazy. And the numbers just don't have the color too. And right? I, funny enough, so we talked about where do you get things from. Uh, we had a customer call into Razor Emporium and said, hey, you know, we got this little razor my dad had. Apparently this guy's dad was part of the research and had just got it from Gillette and he was one of the people that said, yeah, I don't, I don't like this feature. So when the customer called us, they're like, yeah, there's this razor, and apparently it was like a reject from Gillette. And I was like, really? I'd like to see a photo of this <laughs> razor. Yeah, never happened and I, to me. I did tell him, I said, hey, you guys have been pretty valuable here. And he's like, honestly, I just kind of want to get rid of it. I, we did pay a pretty good penny for it, but definitely it was nice to get it right from the source. In case and all. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. So what are we doing now, Matt? I think it's now going to be time for the Hollywood game. So. I've, I've been on Badger and Blade, I've been on the different chat rooms, and one of the topics that always comes up is what razor were they using in that movie? People see that famous scene with the movie, they're like, oh, what straight razor was that, or what safety razor? And so we're going to play a game where 
We have to see either what razor they're using, or if you can guess the game, or sorry, the name of the movie. So what movie or what razor? Or maybe both. And we're gonna, we'll write our responses on our whiteboards, and then you guys are gonna uh, shout them out, and we'll see who was right. Because there's nothing I like more than kicking Doug's ass. <laughs> like that happens often. I think every game I've kicked your ass, seriously. <laughs> We are ready. Oh, okay. Do not say the razor or the movie man. I know, I, I always shout out the answers, but I actually happen to know both. The razor and the movie. So. And I recognize the soap. Oh, oh really? <laughs> More writing, less talking. All right, do you two have answers written down? So the movie and the... One point for the movie, one point for the razor model. It's okay, nobody expects you to have seen any movie stuff. You want me to write a novel? Okay. All right, audience, what do you guys think? Royal Tannenbaum. Royal Tannenbaum. What's the model of the razor? Huh? Okay. Okay, could be any other suggestions? Ballet auto strap? Ballet auto strap? Anybody else? No, I'll, I'm just writing it bigger. I'm not cheating. Matt, cheap. you can't. I'm not cheating, I'm just writing it bigger. You all saw this. Matt gets disqualified in every single challenge. <laughs> all right, go ahead and reveal. I just wrote it bigger, but I did write Life Aquatic and 19, Gem 1912. It is a Gem 1912, and the movie the Royal Cannonball. Okay. Nice. Which is very similar to Life Aquatic, isn't it? Like, it's like the same movie. Okay, okay, thank you. Life Aquatic was better. <laughs> What's that other one where they're going on the Darjma Express or whatever? Huh? Yes, that's what I thought it was. I actually first wrote Indian Express. Like, that's, that's, it's like a restaurant. <laughs> Indian Express. Sorry, that's no. so bad. <laughs> All right. They're Native Americans. We need like a. All right, go ahead and roll the second movie. Ooh, I know that razor too. I didn't see it. That was so fast. That's it. Man, that's that. You stumped me there. I got the razor though. Just write the answer down. All right. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm ready. I got very specific with the answer. All right. Audience, what do you guys think? What movie? Right? That was me. No, nobody? No Stray one? Dogs is surrounding the building right now. So fast of a clip. Alright, what was the razor? It was a tech? What kind of tech? They're, they're close. No? Alright, what do you guys think? A 1960s Gillette UK made spiral tech. Yes, I say Gillette spiral, but it was also a Merker mustache razor in there as well. I said 2001 A Space Odyssey. I don't think that's, 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 real, that's correct. Doug, that's zero points, Matt, you got one. Wait, no, I got the Gillette, I got the Gillette Spiral. Oh, it says S-E. S-P. I was in the middle of writing Spiral. Can I give it to him? Come on! <laughs> All right. I'm working here. Okay. I don't get the movie. Yeah, what's the movie? That's Pink Floyd's The Wall? This is the biggest Pink Floyd fan. Pink, I am a huge Pink Floyd fan. I've worn them on the Clearly, set. clearly. Yeah. What else we got? Keep coming. I'm killing it. Alright. Okay, that's easy. Alright. Well... I am colorblind. I just want to put that up there. Bambi! <laughs> Don't take that away from me. Alright, what do you guys think? Yeah, what's the consensus? Mike? The Razor! What's the movie? What's the Razor? Right. 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 Was it? Girl that around? Yes. Oh my God. Show, your, oh my God. show your answers. Jalad, red to basic instinct. <laughs> Come on! Uh, From my angle, it looked blue. Like, was it a blue? Ah! Movie? You never wrote down the movie. I, I, did, I couldn't, I don't know. Alright, one point for Matt. It is a blue super speed. And I wrote the year of when it was made. <laughs> <laughs> the handle looks really... Yeah, that was a blue tip. It was a blue tip. Actually, on Badger and Blade, they say that that is a a black tip super speed. No. We can play that in slow motion. It's it's flared out as blue. Flare, yeah. So that's incorrect. But that you are right. It's a blue tip. 
the handle even looks fatter too. I don't know. All right, watch the TV. Welcome to the Rock. Okay, okay. Matt, done? I think... Ah, no, no, no. Oh, shit. I was almost ready to ruin it. All right. All right, what do you guys think? What's the movie? Yeah, okay, and the Razor, multiple answers are possible here. The Darjeeling Limited. Multiple answers. I heard super speed. I hear slant. Slant? Slant? What kind of slant? Oh. Closed home scallop head. All right, show me your answers. I, from my angle, it looked like a valet auto truck. I couldn't see it very well. I see real turning bombs and... Uh, and Darjeeling uh, Express, or however you spell that? Darjeeling, uh, like the yeah. tea. You know what I meant. This guy just said it. Okay. All right, Matt, you did get the, the movie correct. You're both wrong on the razors. Acceptable answers are a Merkurslant, a Kohl's, or a Hoffritz. I say Hoffritz. Well, you didn't say Hoffritz. <laughs> I'm saying that now. So you're wrong. Okay. It stinks. That's just because you suck at it. <laughs> Alright, this is the last one. Who's been keeping score? Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, he, look at him. He's really shaving there. <laughs> okay. Alright, what do you guys think? What's the movie? That's my favorite movie. Uh, I, why does it not surprise me? And what is the Razor model? Uh, Fat Boy 185. Fat Boy, yeah? Fat Boy, yeah, Spider-Man. I don't know movies, I'm a film guy. <laughs> I said Rocket Boys, which also has Jake Gyllenhaal, I think. That was the book. I don't know that. Oh, okay. Should I get the title belt? <laughs> he even put the dollar sign. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's Matt. Yeah. Well, great, folks. Uh, we had a wonderful time here today yeah. in uh, sunny Pasadena, California, at the Big Shave West 3. We'd like to thank you all for joining us for our first ever thank live. You. I'm glad to be shaving. We want to do more of this. We hope to take the road of the show. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you next time, guys.